Hey guys, welcome back. Let's play Chrono Cross. Last time we came aboard the SS Zelbus and we challenged Fargo to a game of chance. And then we lost our boat because he was cheating. When we figured that out, we were turned into cats, where we saw a whole whack ton of really interesting cutscenes build up characters that we don't have yet. We don't have period, or we don't have any more. I'll let you try and figure out which one is which. At the tail end of the last episode, I went into uh, pretty much into business for myself since uh, Mr. Fargo was so nice to give us our boat back once we found out he was cheating at his uh, gambling game. We decided to pay him back by cheating ourselves and abusing uh, the pause menu by in the remaster, just hitting the escape key or in the original PlayStation version, just pressing the start button, which you can't even do in this room for some reason. It's not just during that one. It's just that room in general. It just doesn't work. Now, if you don't play the game on either the original PlayStation version or the PC version of the remaster, say you're playing on console, Switch, whatever other consoles it's on, I don't know. Uh, Anyway, if you're playing on one of those, there are a few other ways of getting access to the Donauterites, which took me about 20 or 25 minutes to get uh, off screen after the uh, previous episode. As I explained then, all you need to do in order to get them is to continue to go after that rainbow shell for getting 10,000 points, but you won't get a rainbow shell every single time, only the first time. Every other time, you'll get Donauterites. I ended up with 12. I only tried to get 10 because I managed to get a couple before. Basically, you only need a minimum of nine. And the reason why you want that is just so you can upgrade everyone's weapons and everyone's armor and everyone's helmets as soon as these uh, uh, become available, because this is the next uh, upgrade after Mithril. But we can't make it yet. So if you're playing one of those other versions and you still need access to Denonderate, there are a few enemies you can get it from. It is a common drop, as we saw, uh, from Rock Roaches on Earth Dragon Isle, but they don't show up as an enemy on their own, so you have to kind of fiddle around and hopefully it spawns. The easier way is to go to uh, fight the Lava Boys in Mount Pyre. It's also a common drop from them, and they're on the fir very first screen. So very easy, you can go do that. It's also a rail ste rare steal from Cat Burglars in the same location, a common steal from Chameleons, Cybots, and Gurgoyles in Port Dragonia, and a rare steal from the Fossaker on Earth Dragon Isle. Plenty of ways to get access to them. In my case, it took me 20, 25 minutes, very small amount of grinding to make my life a lot easier in the long run. Now, we got our boat back from Fargo at the end of the last episode. You win. Now we can go to the Grand Slam. And when we go to the Grand Slam, we're going to... Well, what we're trying to do there again? Right. We were... Is this the right way? That's leading up onto the deck. I need to go down one more floor first. Yeah, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a hold of the former Sage of Marbule. And now that the captain has given us permission, we can go down here. What is it about not getting out alive, though? What exactly is down here? And a song we have not heard in quite some time, at least on screen. When we first gained access to the boat, I went back to the bluffs where this scene or this music plays uh, as well. Only two locations, I believe, in the entire game are a couple of rooms down here and climbing the bluffs. Not sure why it's on the bluffs, but anyway. I... Welcome Iron Man. Yeah, this is the uh, Grand Slam is down there, but the Grand Slam, even though that's what's down here, it's not what we were looking for. Ah, there he is. Let's follow him. Now, based on my understanding, you don't have to follow him every time. You can just keep cycling back and forth, and eventually he gets tired of you, quote-unquote, following him, and he'll confront you. You just have to go in and out of the doors. 
Uh, well, I was kind of sort of following you, but uh, not really. Anyway, you don't have a time for a game attack. Where is the Dead Sea? Um, why not? Stolen our land along with our legendary treasure. What treasure would that be? Well, you're not wrong. So yeah, the the idea of the demi-humans living in a semblance of slavery is not lost on, I think, anyone playing this. Uh, if you're old enough to be able to read the dialogue, it's at least obvious enough that I think you should be able to see that. The, the way that they go about it is somewhat heavy-handed, though. I wish they would have been a little more subtle with it. But then again, when I was playing it as a kid, I probably needed it to be as blunt force trauma as it is to be able to make sense of it all. Lost all sense of pride, no dreams of tomorrow. Cling to the mercy of humans every day. And yet we're asking them for help. What will I do? Now, I believe this just cancels out. Avoid conflict. Do not forget. And he goes back to, to work. <laughs> so we need to do the brute force method. Brute force method. If I can speak. And we must fight one of the most unique boss fights in the entire game. The Sage of Marbule is quite innate and has a very unique uh, attack strategy, meaning you can do a lot with this fight. If you do nothing but normal attacks, he will do in kind. Nothing but normal attacks. This is the easiest way of beating him because his normal attacks are not particularly challenging or difficult to deal with. You can nuke him pretty fast if you do that. He has a specific attack pattern depending on what element you use against him. If you use no element, like I said, all he's going to do is attack you. But if you decide to cast an element, it will lead him into a four attack or a four move uh, attack pattern for a little while. Of course, I had to miss one. And, well, if you use a red on him, he will use a number of things, ending with him casting Inferno on the party. We've already captured this, so I have no need to do that. We have, if you use a blue element against him, then he will eventually counter with Deluge. If you use a green, he will counter with Carnivore. If you use a black, he counters with Freefall. A white, he counters with Holy Light. Those are all level 5 elements. For some reason, if you cast a yellow attack against him, including a trap element, he will counter by casting, eventually, Thunderstorm. So what he's done is he's turned us yellow so that he can attack with a green element, which, ow, that did a lot of damage considering the whole field was yellow. Um, let's get something else uh, set up here. Let's set up Diminish before I die. <laughs> yeah, his elements are the real dangerous part of this fight. If you ignore uh, all of your elements, uh, at least the ones that you would cast against him. Yeah, his physical attack is nothing to worry about. There we go. He's got double yellow. I don't know if that does anything as far as weakness goes. Never thought to, to look at that, actually. But anyway, it leads him into a base attack pattern. And that attack pattern, as you've seen, is turn yellow, arrow blaster, a physical attack, low res. And on his next turn,
I up and use it. He uses Thunderstorm. Now we can capture that. You're afraid. Hmm. I wonder if this continues up until the next part of the fight. I'm going to do this again. Actually, I'm going to hold off for a minute. I'm just going to defend a few times and see if he just goes... Yeah, he's going back to his normal attacks, which I'm not worried about. He should go back into the same attack pattern here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture a couple of these, and then I will see you in a few moments. Yeah, back into the same thing. Arrow Blaster. Diminish is doing its job. Make sure to heal up. And yeah, I'll capture two more of these, and I will be right back. Okay, there's our last thunderstorm that we need there. Not that we technically need all three, but why not? And for the rest of it, let's just have Links finish things off, because, well, as you might be able to guess, boss is white in eight, Links is black in eight, it's not gonna end well for the uh, for the poor old man here. So I guess that's what I'm doing now. I'm beating up the geriatric. And as long as you keep with the physical attacks, you won't have to worry about any sort of counter. So I'm not even gonna bother to use an element. We'll just switch over, have someone else attack. And back to Lynx here. And that's the fight. Now, as you can see, if you use elements against him and you don't know the attack pattern, this fight is difficult. I may or may not have actually game overed on this fight in my first playthrough of the game as a kid. I can't remember. It's been so long now. Hey, we got strength, we got strength, and we got strength. Big time setups here. Oh, and my team scored. Cool. It's, it's rare that I actually watch any of the playoffs, but... Come on, it's my team. If you're wondering who my team is at the moment, uh, I am cheering for the Flames, who may or may not be uh, in the playoffs by the time this comes out. <laughs> they tied the game, but I haven't been playing this game all that well. Yes, indeed, we are serious. Carrying the burden of fate for the human race, or for all life forms. Well, that's one hell of a destiny. Let me give you this. Put it to good use. Opening a new gate also brings forth a new misfortune. The Fiddler Crab. There is an area near the Dead Sea where the tides are different, and you can physically see this on the map. Use the item there. Nature will take over. There. Now, if I remember correctly, this happens regardless of whether you've done any of the side questing scenes with Nikki and learned about his search for the Sage of Marbule. Of course you did, because everyone seems to know where this guy is at all times. A legendary song of Marbule. And the pop star wants to learn a new song. Only has a place in the hearts of demi-humans. Why should I teach you the song? Irene's asked me. She has not given up. He seems to know a little more than what he's revealing to poor Nikki. It's not only because she asked. An interest in that song. Beautiful song or originating from a beautiful island. Means I can save someone through my song. There was once a man just like you. Who? Oh. Argo, of all people. Ah, so you're his son. I guess history does repeat itself. Interestingly enough, the sage seems to know a little bit about what's going on, but only from the perspective of Irene's, not necessarily 
what she's doing for Nikki, who is, I guess, technically her nephew. I think. But high hopes for that man. One day tear down the wall between demi humans and humans. Look at us now. The walls seem even higher. Yes, indeed they do. And why not? Now, we already learned that he lost his wife. But apparently, he's locked in his own sorrow. You can hear him too. Apparently, both of them can. Whether that's through familial connection or some mysterious demi human ability, oneness with the planet, I, I don't know. My father hears that song. But I have other areas of the ship I must mop. Can't do it. Well, I hum myself a song. Wait a minute. Uh, I, I see what you did there. Saw the way you fought back there. Been looking for tough guys like you. Oh? It would be honor if we could talk inside my ship. Interesting. All right. Well, that was interesting. Now, before we do anything else, I want to run back and save since we got those uh, thunderstorm elements. All you have to do is talk to the back of the door. For some reason, they close it behind you. And so, yeah, I'm just going to go walk over the save point to get that auto save. And then we're going to head back. Now, before we go talk to Nikki, there's one other thing I would like to do here. We still have free access to this area, and it's called the Grand Slam. Let's figure out what exactly the Grand Slam is. Finish him. Oh, it's a gambling thing. Of course it is. Your monster always loses. Oh, this isn't some kind of weird side questy thing, is it? Um, I can't say your lines, otherwise YouTube will get mad at me. <laughs> you can do it! Uh, okay, enough of that. The ultimate event of events, the Grand Slam. Monsters from all over the world are here to battle it out. The way that this works... No turning back now. You have a competition here using any of the monsters. Fight with your might. Believe the hype. Time to get it on! This is Janice, the uh, champion. Don't take me too lightly. Now, here, you'll by default get access to the same 10 enemies that you had access to uh, on Sprig by default. To get additional options in here, you need to uh, get new doppelgangs for Sprig. Other than for using some of the doppelgangs with Sprig for capturing more elements, I've also specifically had you fight a couple of enemies and defeat them with Sprig so that we can have the power that we need to actually win this. It's very difficult, if it's even possible, to win this fight with the default monsters. That's not to say all of them are bad, but you only get to choose three and you can't repeat them in subsequent fights. Now, the way it works, or at least the way that I've set, uh, tested it out, you get Lagoonate here, and we get uh, Total Chaos here, 
Those two alone can finish it off. Fill the last spot with whatever enemy has decent health. Wraith already has decent health, so we're just gonna go with that. I use the X button to confirm which one you want to. Circle cancels out. Once you're done with that, we can move on and we must fight. Lagune is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting here. It's really powerful. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get rid of the Biba. So let's get rid of that first. And we've already knocked it down. Good. Yeah, the, uh, the Wraith is not here to do any damage. It's just there as a sponge. It's there to eat hits so that our other guys can survive a little bit longer. As you can see, the uh, Terminator is really powerful, which is one of the reasons why I directed you to pick one up earlier. Because we're going to make use of that in a subsequent uh, subsequent fight there. Now, one interesting thing about this, uh, some of the fights here, uh, do you not have one? I thought you had one. Is the elements that you can get access to here, the Hellbound and Hell Soul, can actually be useful in these fights because you can inflict instant death and take on enemies that are really powerful all on your own, even with enemies or with monsters that are a little weaker. In this case, I'm not even gonna bother. Let's. Sure, doesn't matter. Total Chaos is basically just here to do a little bit of damage, hopefully finish off the gloop, and then move on. It didn't do a lot of damage. Um, go, Wraith, do something! There we go, the Wraith accomplished something. Impressive, and, oh, he's not gone. Well, so yeah, you could go like Hell Soul here and hopefully get lucky. If not, then the whole, oh, wow, it worked? Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, basically you're supposed to win that with just the Lagunate doing all the damage on its own and the others are just there to eat damage for the most part. I chose to use the, uh, I chose to use the Total Chaos just because it did decent damage and it had decent health. How about some of this? Yeah, they don't show you who you're gonna face. Uh, this time we want to use the Fossaker and the Yellow Belly. The other one doesn't matter. Um, what else is not terrible? Uh, what do we got here? I've got... I don't think any of the goblins are really all that good. Let's go for crossbones. I don't think it's very good, but it's there. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Just pick something, anything. The other two have this in the bag. There's no way they can lose. They're just too powerful. But yeah, we've basically picked up the Fossaker, the Yellow Belly, and the Truminator. Those are the only ones you need to pick up just to make this easy enough to do. As you can see, the Fossaker and the Yellow Belly have huge HP. They're really, really powerful, and no one can really stand against us. I would take out the Spearfisher first because he can be a bad time if he gets certain elements off that I know he has. Ice Blast being one of them, but not the worst of the bunch. Do not freeze him, thank you. Alright, let's finish you off here. And yeah, the rest of the fight is sadly pretty easy. Uh, you have, you know what? I have two different uh, guys on the field that uh, are yellow base. So sure, why not? Let's have you attack this. Eh, you do moderate damage. Uh, sure, we'll see if we can get lucky again. At least now I can actually show off Hell Soul and then Hell Down. Does it work? Oh my god, it worked! <laughs> or did it not? No, I guess it didn't work. Never mind. You're always getting excited that both of them actually worked. Yeah, they, the hit chance just isn't high enough to warrant using it, in my opinion. Um, 
Sure, we'll lower your resistance, why not? Lower your defense a little bit, do a little bit more damage. The uh, Cybot has a lot of HP, but we're not really worried because he's yellow and... Ow! Okay, maybe we are a little worried. He does a lot of damage. Uh, we're not going to try and use attacks like that. Yeah, you don't do very much. Basically just down to uh, these guys. Try and do a little bit of damage here. Mainly, we're just going to outlast them because we're three on one at this point. It seems like there's almost a little bit of delay on some of the... Uh, some of the cancels out because I keep trying to select like the next uh, the next character to attack and it's going real slow. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Well, there goes Crossbones. Not that I need him anymore because we've got the guy toast, but... There's round two. You basically just use enemies in there that are going to take a lot less uh, damage. This is it. I'm going to win. Now, here's the third and final round. This time, we want Terminator, who's going to do the bulk of the damage. Cat Burglar's a good secondary. And, I don't know, the Goblin's one of them? Sure. The Bulb, the Beach Bomb, the Komodo Pup, the Garaday, the Gobbledygook, they're all trash. Don't bother using any of them. I don't know if the Snib or the Snob Goblin's better, but it doesn't matter because all you need is Terminator and Cat Burglar's a good secondary. Basically how I have it uh, set up in my notes. Like, okay, we need one powerhouse, one to kind of keep things going, and then we should be good. Now, you might recognize Couscous here. Couscous is a bad time, as you might suspect, considering what we've seen of him in the past. So, Couscous needs to go bye bye yesterday, so it can't counter and do boatloads damage. And we can set up charge here on you. Do some decent damage with this, I think. I think this is physically based. Yeah, not bad. The uh, airframe is the enemy there. It's actually a relatively powerful enemy. So I do want to try and finish it off. It can do this power dive attack that I believe I showed off on the game. And it does a lot of damage. You missed. Um, sure, we've got Arrow Blaster going. Do something. Let's try and weaken him a little bit. There we go. We got, got him down there. He's got uplift coming. I'm not worried about uplift all that much. The Truminator basically does this fight on his own. Uh, the others are just there to basically eat hits, as you've seen. All right, so we're going to get stamina refresh here. He's going to get low rests off on the wrong target, so that's fine. Truminator, do your stuff. And we'll go for another charge. The advantage here, once it comes down to one-on-one, -on -one, is that you can abuse the stamina refresh if you need to, uh, because you can just go two attacks and then out every time, and you'll never have to worry about not getting your stamina back, because you can only get one attack and then you're gonna get your stamina refresh anyway. And for doing that, we get the Dreamer's Bandana. The other ones were a Stamina Belt and a Resistance Belt, which we will go over a little bit later. And my team just lost. Well, that's that. Speaking of people who lost, Janice lost. At least I can manage to win in the game. And we get an achievement for doing that. It's really difficult to do with the base monsters you have. As you can see, some of the enemies that she has are really powerful. You basically have to get lucky with because uh, chances are you're going to have Total Chaos anyway. You're just going to have to get lucky with Total Chaos and the Wraith of inflicting instant death. And I don't like going on luck when I can avoid it, as you saw from the last episode and this one, really. <laughs> um, well, from just 
killing a few things here and there. I want to come with you. Well, you can have her join your party. And Janice joined the party. Janice is, well, she's red innate. Her stats are okay. They're basically slightly off what you see with Radius there. Not terrible. Not my favorite. She has no story involvement in the game at all. But she's here, so we might as well pick her up. We will give you a holler. In fact, you will be a character that I use at one point in the game. Not because of how good you are or anything like that, but because you're red innate and you have 10 stamina. I will explain that later, but that's the only reason I will be using her later. But I figured I'd pick her up while we were in the neighborhood. All right. Um, what else we got going on here? Oh, he's not there. The idiots are here. Old Man Snaff has a considerable amount of debt. Precisely why he cannot leave the ship. Only joy in his life. Kind of sad. It is kind of sad. So with that in mind, let's go to the casino one more time. What's up with Snap today? Ever since the captain lost, Snap's been on a winning streak. I wonder why. Argo's a dirty cheater. So we cheated him out of a bunch of uh, bunch of pieces of rock, basically. That's what Denoderite is. There, it's a. Uh, it'll be stone weapons for some reason. Stone is better than mithril. Not sure how that works, but sure. Jackpot score. Lady Luck is with you. Now you can pay off your debt to the dirty captain. Luck is finally going your way. And you're going to finally be able to get the hell off the ship. He knew when to quit. He got enough money to pay off things, and he actually left. Is he here talking to the captain? Yeah, we found the sage. It's about time you left. Well, okay. But before we leave, Sneff managed to uh, clear his debt, which was nice. So I wonder, is he still performing here, or did he actually get off the ship? Hmm. Doesn't look like I can watch the show anymore. You paid off your debt. Nope, he finally managed to pay off his debt. And there's no reason for him to stay. He can finally leave. I wouldn't blame you. It's three years ago when you uh, found us after uh, you took us in after you found us wandering around with amnesia. Of course they have amnesia. Still have a ways to go with Stamina and Up Comedy Act, but one day you'll really truly make somebody laugh. <laughs> Lank and Stout, he has named them for the lanky and stout nature of their builds. Real great job with the naming, as usual, video game. If I run into any of your comrades, I'll be sure to tell them that you're, that you're doing well. Go on that diet already. I know. <laughs> Enough moping around. Take care. Nah, forget it. You're always talking about getting out of here. Not until you're able to handle four swords. Not until someone actually laughs at their stupid jokes. <laughs> Can't leave my family behind. Just want you to know, I may be traveling with these people. Oh?
Should be practicing instead of crying. Feels good being yelled at by Pops again. <laughs> what were you saying now? You can have him join your party. He's already had all the character development he's going to get, but here's Snaff. Uh, Snaff is not one of my favorite characters. He's yellow innate, which means he's up against Norris. Norris is better. Norris is always better. I think he's the best yellow innate character in the game. Uh, there's only one other who I would use on anywhere close to the same level, and you get that character so late that the uh, stats just don't end up holding up to uh, Norris usually. But yeah, he's there. I don't care. <laughs> but he's there. Anyway, I think we'll call her a day here. Next time, we're going to go and check on Nikki. If you remember, he uh, said he wanted to talk to us on uh, his boat later on. But anyway, that's pretty much all the time for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.